We are about to hear David Foster Wallace discuss tennis. And if you have ever read Infinite Jest, his nonfiction essays, or know anything about his life, you know that tennis was a central part of it. And once we hear from Wallace, we are going to have a discussion about what he said. And if you guys are interested in more David Foster Wallace content, Right Conscious is the headquarters on YouTube for not just clips of Wallace talking, but breakdowns of his essays, books, ideas, and life. So subscribe and go check out those videos and I'll see you on the other side. Well, if you're asking why why it's in the book, the reason it's in the book is it's the one sport I knew well enough to be able to try to talk about why it was beautiful. And it's also a sport that has to do with two very bounded spaces and sending stuff back and forth between them, which has other stuff to do with the book. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think, I think tennis is a very, very beautiful sport because it's very abstract and geometrical um, and and tactical like chess and it's also very very physical there's a lot there's a lot of running <laughs> you get very tired playing I don't know about the boxing thing unless that it's just usually one person against another person but it's and there's chess well if if you're really interested um, really good tennis players like really good chess players are always thinking four or five moves I had um, actually this was this was something that that um, um, that some of the German players who were superstars in the '90s were something very good at doing. Um, Boris Boris Becker didn't didn't just come up and and hit an ace. What Boris Becker and I think he'd learned this from McEnroe, was really good at hitting a forcing serve that made you hit a weak return that let him come into the net and put the next shot away. I mean, so that um, everything everything is being thought of ahead. Um, but it's also, very, it's also very combative. You and I are playing. If I win, you lose. I'm trying to beat you. Very individual. I don't feel like this is making any sense at all. It does? Uh, okay, actually. okay. I'm sorry, but I have no, to no. it does. No, <laughs> no. Okay, fine. <laughs> Well, you're, you can run some sort of editing magic. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> but I don't have to. The, the, but there's also something about, it's also combat at a distance. In, in boxing, the two bodies are very close to each other. There's something a little colder about tennis, which is I am trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to beat you, but you're 75 feet away from me, and what's traveling between us is just this small thing. It's, there's something more abstract about it, which is a little bit more like chess. And what you also said is more mathematical, right? There was an. I think there was a. There was. A, are you talking about the essay that talks about calculus and 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 no, tennis? Maybe I didn't understand it, but it was when when um, Hal talked. No, Hal talked is it Mario who talks to this this, this guy who from from his name is Stig. 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 Yeah. And he, he says that. A German, as I recall. Yeah, um, but it's not a German name, actually. No, of course it isn't. What it is, is what it's it like is, is a vaguely, vaguely Germanic sounding name yeah. to Americans. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's not the subtlest character in there. I just thought of him. Um, well, the angles, the angles are, are mathematical, so I don't know. Inspiration, though, is contagious and multiform. And even just as C, close up, Power and aggression made vulnerable to beauty is to feel inspired and in a fleeting mortal way reconciled. This is D David Foster Wallace from Roger Federer as a religious religious experience. And I am a pretty experienced table tennis player and a budding pickleball player, but I've never really dived too deep into tennis. However, through David Foster Wallace, I have learned more about tennis than most sports that I don't play. And there's a book out there, linked down in the description, called String Theory, David Foster Wallace on Tennis. So if you want to get just a complete tennis fix in regards to Wallace, this is what you need to read. And what this book explores mostly is, first of all, in a very maximalist way, the dynamics and history of tennis, obviously from its inception, but really from about 1980 to 2000. And we just heard Wallace talking about kind of the multi-step thinking that certain players started to develop in the 90s, and he speaks about that. And this is akin to chess, where uh, people think a couple steps ahead, and in terms of the physical body, the original multi-step thinking with offense and defense was in martial arts. But tennis is bounded in a certain space, and it involves math. And Wallace was kind of talking about that 
And he, this is a huge metaphor that he makes in Infinite Jest. And when I break down Infinite Jest for free on this channel, we'll get into all that because that's a little wild to get into right now. But Wallace really brings a unique style to a lot of these essays in the book. Because the, first of all, like a lot of our consciousness especially in America, if you're like working a normal job, is very maximalist. We have these moments every day where we're planning and thinking and like going crazy. And it's very akin to what, what Wallace is trying to do. And this v connects very well to Wallace's Proustian sentiments also in the book, where uh, in these essays, excuse me, where he goes back to his own life or his, these experiences. And these get lost in like very deep observations and like numbers upon numbers about certain aspects of tennis. And there's also good balance in this book. We do get some like dissection of the pros and the politics and aspects of like pro tennis, but then there are whole pieces and really great, beautiful writing about like his high school days, just playing tennis out on windy days in Illinois. And then there's a whole piece of trace of deconstructing, doing like a literary analysis on Tracy Austin, who was a famous tenor, tennis player's memoir. Like you get you get him just picking this random book and just like ripping it apart and like getting super crazy into it. So all of this can be pretty exhausting. But if you are a super fan of David Foss Wallace and read, you know, everything that he's done then this is obviously a place to start. But if you know nothing about David Foster Wallace, but you are a tennis fan, I would recommend this because it will make you smarter. It will make you think more about tennis and give you a whole different perspective on writing. So if you guys, once again, want to see more David Foster Wallace content, there should be a David Foster Wallace podcast, the only one on YouTube, down below with a bunch of more episodes. And I will see you guys in the next video.